Mexico judge allowed a 19 year old to attend college as she awaits trial for killing her newborn baby. In response, a petition has surfaced online trying to ban the woman from the university. Alexi Treviso is charged with first degree murder, child abuse and tampering with evidence in connection to the incident in late January. Treviso went to the hospital with back pain, allegedly not knowing that she was pregnant. And 24 hours later, hospital staff found the body of Treviso's son in a bathroom trash can. An autopsy ruled the baby's death a homicide, apparently dying from a lack of oxygen. But defense attorneys argued that Treviso's son was in fact stillborn, and the baby's death was actually a result of hospital malpractice. Last week, Treviso's defense team argued that her bail condition should be modified so she can attend fall classes at New Mexico State University. Treviso was previously banned from contacting her boyfriend who attends the same university, but the presiding judge sided with the defense since the relationship was, wasn't deemed violent. As of Monday, more than 13,000 people have signed a petition on change.org asking the university to reconsider Treviso's admission. According to the description, the petition's goal is to, quote, protect vulnerable individuals and ensure their safety. Brian, you think this petition's gonna work, that she'll be not allowed back in? I don't think so. So a little over 13,000 people, I, I looked it up, the state of the New Mexico State University, and they has just a little over 11,000 people. So clearly this is not just the student body. If it is even the student body, it could be people from outside the school. I think this might be dealt with more internally, but also I'm still stuck on the protecting vulnerable individuals. Who's the vulnerable individual you're talking about? Are you talking about the fact that she's accused of a crime and now you don't want anyone around her because of that? Well, we let people accused of crimes walk among us all the time even murders. Um, the other thing too is, if it's specific to the crime that she committed or she's accused of committing, what do you think she's going to do? Force herself on men, get pregnant, and then get rid of that child again? It's, it's, it's absurd to, to, to kind of make I the I guess argument. the idea of uh, an accused murderer. I mean, like, without looking at the facts, that's what but, they're going to say. But if it's an accused murderer, then it would make more sense based on how they murdered. Do they stab someone, shoot someone, or take advantage right. of a child? Because that, the judge already decided, she's not a danger to others. That's why she's released on bail. I guess the, I mean, Brian's making a good point. I always thought you were innocent until proven guilty. But then again, the people who signed this position, do they have a right? Do they have a First Amendment right to put this out there? Could they face any legal consequences for doing this and affecting her career? Yeah, I mean, they have a First Amendment right, Jesse, but I think here what they are doing is jumping the gun. I mean, you are innocent until you are proven guilty. And here, she was let out. The judge did allow her to go to the college. And frankly, I think they could face intentional infliction of emotional distress, frankly, because... You mean the Treviso would sue them for that? That is correct, because she's trying to live her life. She's been allowed out, and now you have these people who are basically claiming that she's going to murder again, and there's no proof of that. And so for that cause of action, as you all know, you have to have outrageous behavior. Now, whether or not it's outrageous to have this petition, actually, I think it is sort of outrageous to have this petition against this young lady. Like Brian said, what is she going to do? So, you know, if that outrageous behavior was intentional, it caused severe emotional distress, I think Teresa could win a claim against them. But doesn't it matter if she's found guilty? If she's found guilty of murder, then does, wouldn't that claim not really work? Because the student body would be like, okay, yeah, we were right, she's a murderer. I think it goes back to the circumstances in which she murdered. Right. It, okay. it, it doesn't make, like, yeah. are you worried that she's going to murder you? I might I'm be, not on the campus. I'm not, yeah, yeah. not going to have a child with her, yeah. but other than that, I don't think there's an issue of fear of murder. Yeah. All right. When we come back, a popular wing joint is the focus of a lawsuit for their controversial layoffs during the pandemic. Allegations from one federal agency against a Hooters restaurant in North Carolina. That's next. Welcome back, everybody. A government agency is suing a North Carolina Hooters restaurant over allegations of racial discrimination against employees. The suit was announced Thursday by the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. During the 2020 COVID pandemic, the Hooters restaurant in Greensboro, North Carolina, had to lay off more than 40 employees known to the chain as Hooters Girls. When employees were able to return to work, the lawsuit alleges a majority of the women called back were white or light-skinned. The federal agency broke down the accusation through data. You see, prior to the COVID-19 layoffs, 51% of the Hooters girls at the Greensboro location were black or dark-skinned women. But after May of 2020, that number reportedly went down to just 8%. 
The suit also claims that in addition to receiving slower shifts, dark-skinned Hooters girls, quote, experienced racial hostility while employed at the restaurant and observed preferential treatment of white employees. The commission is asking for an injunction against the chain and back pay for the former Hooters girls, in addition to compensatory and punitive damages. Terry, you've tried employment discrimination cases before. What do you think of this one? I think it's a good one. You know, in employment discrimination, you have direct actions, you have indirect actions. The direct action is when there is a direct adverse action against an individual. The indirect is when you have a pattern of practice. In either case, you're going to have to show that there was some sort of race discrimination. I think here, what Hooters is going to have to do if they're going to defend this case is to say, look, there was no discrimination. All of our decisions were based on business reasons that had nothing to do with the color of their skin. I think that's going to be very difficult in this case because it does look as though they have the numbers behind them to bring this yeah. lawsuit. That's the part, Brian. If the numbers are behind them, isn't this like a simple case? I think yes, no, back to Terry, what she's saying. She's got to go back and say, so you rehired 13 people and one of them are of a darker skin or darker complexion. Why did you hire that one and not everyone else to maintain those numbers? But I think even just this case is just a small uh, bit of sand on the beach because Hooters has a history of being sued with weight bias. They've actually had a case like this back in 2015 of racial bias where a dark skinned woman said, oh, you're only hiring the blondes and I'm not allowed to come in. Uh, and also, interestingly enough, they've also had gender discrimination on at least two occasions where men try to get on, onto the employment and they were not allowed to. So Hooters seems to be almost be on notice as to these types of discrimination, even though they're individual chains uh, operating throughout the country. And I think that history may actually help the plaintiffs in this case, along with the numbers. So if that's true and Hooters were to lose this, take it all the way to trial and lose it, what are the damages here? And could they be worse if, as Brian said, since they have a, you know, a history of it? Oh, the damages could be in the millions. And not only that, they could get an injunction against them. They're going to have to change their policies. And it will be a lot of money. The, there's no limit right now. You can get compensatory damages. You can get punitive damages. And that's a lot of money. All right. Serious case? You should apply. <laughs> Brian, Terry, good to see you both. Everyone, thanks for joining us here at Long Crime Daily. We'll see you next time as we discuss justice in America. Thanks for